Hi there, it's me again, Nick Brook, and I've got something beautiful to show you that I helped make recently. This is the print-on-demand edition of The Armies and Enemies of Dragon Pass, a mighty tome by Martin Helston. This was one of the first releases on the Johnstown Compendium, which is Chaosium's community content site for RuneQuest and the world of Glorantha. It came out just less than two years ago, in December 2019. There was a very limited run print edition at the same time that Martin financed off his own back. But this is the first mass market print on demand edition. So this book's great. It's got everything in it you could possibly want to know about warfare in Greg Stafford's Bronze Age fantasy mythological world of Glorantha. Um, the book is full of art by Martin Helston, the author, who has illustrated many of the troop types he describes, such that if I just open pages at random, you're going to see beautiful military units from Glorantha, imagined by Martin. So you can look at these and say, hey, that's what my player character wears, or that's what the people my player character's fighting look like, or mo most likely, that's the brilliant gear I'm going to scavenge from this battlefield. But as well as that, there's some other art in there as well. Chaosium gave Martin access to archives, so although they're only in grayscale here, I'll talk about that in a minute, there's some beautiful full-page plates from Jean Pospisil that first appeared in the Guide to Glorantha, and there's other artwork scattered throughout as well. So what is in this book? It's about just under 400 pages long. I think it's 384 pages of text. Um, the first 200 or so pages are a detailed thematic discussion of how warfare works in Glorantha, what troop types exist and what they're for, what they do, who they work well against, what arms and armour exist and how they are made and what they look like, with lots of pages showing different kinds of swords and scimitars, and <laughs> I still use the old words, and different kinds of armour and different shields and explaining how they're made, what crafts are involved in making them, what materials are used to make them. Um, descriptions of the way different warfare works in different parts of the world, so the difference between the way uh, Praxians make war on each other compared to the way all Anthe go to war compared to the civilised way of war, which is of course that of the Lunar Empire. It talks about battles, logistics, long distance transport, siege warfare, and then about 200 pages in we start talking about magical warfare. Okay, there's, there's a bit about using dinosaurs in sieges, but as far as I'm concerned that's historically accurate. But thereafter we start talking about how does magical warfare work, who are the gods of war worshipped around Glorantha, and then the last um, hundred and something pages, more than a hundred pages of the book, are army lists for the hero wars. So detailed descriptions of the kinds of troops that took part in the hero wars. Now we're most familiar with these from the board game Dragon Pass, and Lots of the troops you'd expect to see in Dragon Pass are described in this book. Excuse me, I just saw something nice to show you. Maybe there, a nice plate there. Um, and so the back end of the book, the army lists, starting here, look like this. Page after page after page after page of details about individual regiments. Now, this is the reason this book took so long to come out. I'll give you a little bit potted history of it. The book came out, as I said, almost two years ago, and almost immediately people were saying, can I have a print edition of this book because it's gorgeous, but it's very big, and I like reading books in gorgeous hardbacks like this. Um, so the call went out, and unfortunately, the original book had been laid out by Martin. He did all the work himself using Microsoft Word. Now, Microsoft Word is it's an okay word processor, but it's absolutely terrible at doing the kind of things you need to do if you're going to make a book into something that can be commercially printed. So we're talking about managing ink limits and bleeds and other technical stuff like that. And it chucks a lot of cruft around images and makes it very hard to do some stuff that you need to do in order to turn it around. So there were various false starts and eventually, um, about five months ago, I took over. People have been trying to get the Word version to behave itself and it hadn't worked. And I said, look, I'll just redo the whole layout in InDesign which was a terrible mistake because it then meant I had to redo the whole layout in InDesign. It's very closely mirrored on the previous edition. There's some extremely slight changes. Uh, it's close enough that, in fact, I didn't bother updating the index at all. If you can't find something you're looking up in the index, just try the next door page. It'll probably be there. Um, pagination is extremely close between the two editions, but this is completely relayed out. There's some very slight tweaks to header formats and the like because I found the originals terrible, but that's just me. Um, so anyhow, yeah, what, what you're getting is this great big book, black and white, full colour covers. The cover art shows our heroine, Jariel the Razoress, 
riding forth from the lunar city of Mirren's Cross, accompanied by the um, chairman for life of the Jariel fan club, also known as the Moonsword Cult, that's a lover and high priest beat pot ale room there. And if you look very closely in the ranks, the serried ranks of the lunar army, it isn't serried a nice word, you'll see Greg Stafford himself marching along. As we all know, Greg was primarily pro-lunar, and I think he'd have been delighted to know that he was marching as to war to crush Prince Argraf and the rebels in Dragon Pass and to bring around the uh, total victory of the lunar way. Happy thought for you all there. So, armies and enemies of Dragon Pass. Like I say, it's, um, it's printed in black and white, grayscale. Uh, bringing out a full colour edition of this would have been terribly wasteful. Most of the interior art is black and white anyway. There were some shaded boxes with colour schemes that didn't quite make sense to me, but that's just me. Um, and you're really just losing out on Jan Pospisil's plates. But since you already own the uh, Guide to Glorantha or the PDF edition of this book, which has them in colour, you're not really missing out at all. The difference in price would have been full colour edition getting on for $100, but this beautiful black and white edition is yours for the low, low price of $39.95. Available now from the Johnstown Compendium on Drive Through RPG. If you want a quick shortcut to that, it's tiny.cc slash jc hyphen armies. A R M I E S. Um, that's all in lowercase. If you do it in uppercase, I can't be sure what will result, but it'll also be on the captions of this um, video YouTube thing, so very easy for you to find. And that reminds me of one of the oldest Scrivanthan jokes, which I have to share with you now. I think this was a particular personal favourite of Michael O'Brien's, and it's, I say, I say, I say, where does the Red Emperor keep his armies? Now, if you're not illuminated, the answer is up his van braces. But if you are illuminated, the answer is wherever he damn well wants to, he rules the world. Happy thought for you all there. Thank you very much. I'm Nick Brook. This is a very nice book. I recommend it. Buy it for yourself for Christmas and then buy it for your friends for Christmas. They will thank you. Goodbye.